These are so good. I found these, these Emmys, uh, peanut butter, coconut, whatever cookies. I found these on the road in New Jersey at a travel stop. I've never heard of this before. Not travel stops. I've heard of travel stops before. I've never heard of Emmys before. And these are really good. Um, you know, I've been uh, eating relatively sugar-free uh, and low-carb uh, for the last, uh, like, I don't know, three months now. However long it's been. I don't know what month it is. Um, and uh, it's hard for me to... It's not hard. It's it's. I have to be more selective in my snacking, right? Because I can't just, like, pop in, like, any old, like, even protein bar or something because they're so loaded down with sugar. Um, you know, I used to eat like a Cliff Bar every morning. Guys, Cliff Bars are 260 calories a piece or 280 calories a piece. And it's something like 46 grams of carbs and like, I don't know, like half your sugar for the day. It's it's insane. But uh, these are cool because they're made with uh, coconut and coconut flour and peanut butter and peanut butter flour. So it's basically just protein and uh, healthy fat. And uh, only uh, six uh, grams of uh, net carbs, so that's not too bad. Uh, I'm sure you're tired of hearing me talk about that stuff, and I don't care, because whatever. They're so good, though. Sarah did not like them. She was like, well, you know, I like coconut, and I like peanut butter, but I don't think I'll like them together. And she was right. Um, I do. They're not too coconutty, and they're plenty peanut buttery. Um, they're not like cookies the way you traditionally would think of them, because <clears throat> I'm sure they're baked in some way, but... They kind of almost taste like like a raw food snack, um, which if you're not into raw food, probably you wouldn't like it anyway. Uh, but I really didn't think I would be video blogging today because uh, I was feeling terrible yesterday and I was feeling kind of like crap this morning. Um, and I'm feeling a little better. Uh, I basically, I was traveling all weekend, like, like literally traveling all weekend. You know when people are like, oh, I'm gonna be traveling this weekend. But it's actually like, oh, I was on a plane for three hours and then I sat around a pool for two days, and then I got another plane for three hours. No, I was like on a plane Friday night at nine o'clock from Orange County, got into New York, uh, JFK at like five or 6 a.m. on Saturday morning. Uh, didn't sleep on the plane, so I had been up at that point since whatever, 7 a.m. or 6.30 a.m. the day before, um, and uh, then we basically wandered around Brooklyn New York for the next eight hours because we couldn't get into our room until like 2.30. So I took a nap as soon as I got to the room, but I had been up for like 27, 28 hours at that point. Uh, I jacked my body up. Um, <laughs> I mean, travel and jet lag normally is bad enough, but then I had the added benefit of being up for way too long, and I'm way too old for that. I mean, everyone's too old for that. At no point should you be staying up longer than 24 hours. You should not really be staying up more than 18 hours, but you get my point. So took a, like, a two-hour nap, then uh, met uh, my friend Gregory for dinner, uh, and then went back to the hotel and right back to sleep, basically. Um, and got a decent amount of sleep, got like seven hours of sleep, but then I had to get up early to go pick up a rental car in Brooklyn. Uh, then we drove... <laughs> we had to drive to New Jersey, uh, middle of South New Jersey. So that was like two and a half hours drive uh, and met uh, my friend Renee for lunch. Then had to go and film an interview uh, with uh, John Emmons for Parkway Broken Dreams. And then drove uh, another hour and a half after doing that uh, to outside of Philadelphia to have dinner with my family. And then drove back to Brooklyn because even though we were going to Manhattan to check into a hotel, I left my laptop at our hotel in Brooklyn. So then I <laughs> had to swing through Brooklyn, uh, which was completely out of the way. I mean, it thankfully it was, it was oh, that blocked my light. That was good. That was great. I was switching arms because I'm holding this with my arm instead of using a tripod because I'm sitting here on the couch because this is the best lighting I have right now without setting up a bunch of stuff. So anyway... Uh, went to Brooklyn, got the laptop, drove over to Manhattan, which was only like a 25 minutes at that time of night on a Sunday. It was, it was like literally, it was like after midnight on Sunday. Uh, so that was another really long day Then I had to get up early on Monday morning 
to return the rental car to uh, a place that I was like, oh, well, it's only like eight blocks from our hotel. No, it wasn't even eight blocks. It was like five blocks from our hotel in Midtown Manhattan on a Monday morning. But the night before, I could only find parking because I'm a moron and don't know, and I don't know how parking works in New York. Uh, I thought I could only find this 24-hour parking garage like a half a mile from our hotel. There was actually one right next to our hotel. But I didn't realize that you like pull up to the gate and then like an attendant comes and takes your car, like a valet. I'm used to parking garages everywhere else. I mean, LA, San Francisco, Seattle, I guess it's just a West Coast thing. Like you pull into the garage and you park it yourself. So that was kind of weird. Uh, so yeah, uh, <laughs> so I, I drove into the only one that didn't have a gate down. Uh, and the guy was like, and I pull in, I go to park and he's like, uh, I'm the, I'm the parking attendant. It's like, I take your car. I was like, oh, is that how this works? Anyway. So that was actually like a mile from where the car rental place was. So I had walked, I had to go, I walked to there and then drove to the car rental place, which was, uh, like 1.9 miles from the parking garage, but it took 20 something minutes to get there because it was midtown Manhattan on a Monday morning traffic, uh, which is, I guess, no different than L.A. traffic, but whatever. Uh, so then I had just enough time to walk back from there to the hotel, shower, change, meet Sarah for lunch, because Sarah was in New York for work, which was sort of the impetus for this whole trip, that and doing the filming for Parkway Broken Dreams. Go back to the hotel, pack up, call for a lift. Right before I call for the lift, because I need to get to JFK, and it's the middle of the day on a Monday, and it was going to be like an hour plus to get across the bridge over to Queens, uh, <laughs> I realized that I didn't have my house keys, because Sarah and I traveled together. We drove her car to the airport. She was going to come back in her car. I was going to come back and take a, a lift. I didn't bring my house keys, and she was at work with her keys and meetings. I couldn't get the house key. <sighs> so anyway, I couldn't catch her. I, I, was, I was like, okay, I'm going to get to the airport and I'll figure it out. Uh, thankfully, we had someone house sitting for us who happens to live literally half a mile from Long Beach Airport. So I got back to Long Beach, had the lift stop at her house, grabbed the key, got home, actually at a decent time because my flight, amazingly, coming back from New York was like 45 minutes early, which was awesome. So I actually got to like have a little bit of time to chill out and hang out with my dogs who I hadn't seen in a few days. And uh, yeah, but of course, all of that hecticness and being on airplanes and being exposed to, you know, East Coast weirdness uh, came back with like a little bit of a cold. Uh, I was just like, I was like blowing my nose all day yesterday and really sniffly and I took a NyQuil uh, uh, the night before because I was like, I need to sleep. I need to catch up on sleep. And A, it backfired because my dogs, of course, got me up twice that night. Jerks. And uh, B, it just made me feel really groggy the next day. So that was yesterday, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I gotta get, I just was in slow motion all day. And then finally, I was like, I'm not gonna take any drugs tonight. I'm just gonna just try to just sleep and I did I just I fell right asleep at like 10 15 I normally can't get to sleep until almost midnight I fell asleep at like 10 15 didn't wake up until seven o'clock when one of my dogs was like hey I gotta go I gotta go pee let me out which I appreciate because it's better than them just peeing in the bed and uh then yeah uh I was feeling at least awake this morning and I was able to function and do work today uh, not as well as I would like to. I still have some work to do tonight because I just, my brain burnt out. Um, but, uh, I'm feeling a little better. i still have like that weird, like icky feeling in the back of my throat, but I didn't have to blow my nose all day. It wasn't runny. Uh, you can still hear me. I sound a little bit like stuffy, but I don't feel that stuffy. I can feel it moving into my chest a bit, but I'm not coffee or anything. If this is actually my normal cold progression. It usually starts with my nose, runs down into my chest, and then it kicks out by like the third day. Uh, I've been just stuffing down Zycam into my throat for the last few days. Um, whether or not you think it works for you 
it usually takes the edge off the cold for me. So I'm um, hoping to be better by Friday because I got this big, like, uh, pre- not big presentation I have to do, but I got to present something at a thing. And then this weekend, it's it's there's people in town and you know would like to go out and ride bikes or something because sarah's finally coming back home and would like to do stuff that isn't just me lying around watching netflix so and i've got a lot of other stuff to catch up on including editing the new footage that i shot this weekend in new jersey so that was a 10 and a half minute so far journey through my mind and i don't know where i had the energy to talk at all or this much but i did it and that's what's happening in the world of pj this week um anyway i've got i've got a lot of stuff to attend to (laughs) and i'm gonna do that but i hope you enjoyed this video blog i know it's been a while but not as long of a while as it has been before so i'd like to say that this is still being a regular thing uh for the three of you that will watch this and for the uh other four thousand million of you that didn't watch it you suck and that's all i have to say about it if you got through this part i'm gonna say secret word and leave the secret word in the comments so i know you actually got to the end of the video the secret word is emmy's peanut butter snacks